The United States' decision to veto a UN Security Council resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza has been sharply criticized by China. Beijing says the move sends the wrong message that gives a green light for continued killings. But the White House says the resolution proposed by Algeria would jeopardize ongoing talks to end the war. We have a report. Algeria's top UN diplomat, Ama Benjama, who proposed the ceasefire deal, says the UN Security Council has failed once again. In his frustration, he said, posterity will judge. France ambassador to the UN, Nicolas de Rivere, expressed regret that the resolution had not been adopted, especially with the disastrous situation in Gaza. Washington's ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, says it is not the right time to call for an immediate ceasefire because negotiations between Hamas and Israel is continuing. And on the table right now would, in fact, negatively impact those negotiations. Demanding an immediate, unconditional ceasefire without an agreement requiring Hamas to release the hostages will not bring about a durable peace. Instead, it could extend the fighting between Hamas and Israel. The UK representative Barbara Woodward says the plan could make a ceasefire deal less likely by endangering talks. But the U.S. has proposed its own temporary ceasefire resolution, which also warned Israel not to invade the city of Rafah. The U.S. decision to block Algeria's resolution as fighting continues in Gaza was backed by 13 of the 15 members of the U.N. Security Council, with the U.K. abstaining. In response to the veto, China's UN ambassador Zhang Jun said the claim that the motion would interfere with the ongoing diplomatic negotiations was totally untenable. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is adamant on carrying out ground attacks in Gaza. He says for Israel to gain complete victory, Hamas must be wiped out and all Israeli hostages freed by the 10th of March. Hamas, on its part, is calling for an end to hostilities and the release of Palestinian hostages by Israel. Egyptian and Qatari mediators are lobbying for a lasting ceasefire agreement between the warring sides. Meanwhile, in Rafah, northern Gaza, life is getting tougher by the day, with latest reports saying Israeli soldiers truck trucks with relief materials to civilians caught up in the war. And for more on the situation in Gaza, the ongoing invasion of Rafah, and the diplomatic row, global affairs analyst Collins Awaken joins me now for in-depth analysis. Good to have you join us. Thank you, Precious, for having me. Now, this is the fourth time um, the U.S. has vetoed the idea of a ceasefire um, in the U.N. Security Council. But what do you make of the reason given by the U.S. this time, um, that it is not the right time to call for an immediate ceasefire while negotiations between Hamas and Israel are ongoing? The United States is basically on their own in their summation that uh, the timing is wrong. Um, at the center of all of this is a ceasefire. The issue now is what is the right timing? And when the U.S. says that um, if an immediate ceasefire is uh, instituted, that it is going to uh, jeopardize ongoing um, negotiations, you could clearly see from the fact that uh, 13 out of the 15 um, you know, Security Council members supported uh, Algeria's uh, move, while the U.S. basically was standing alone because uh, even the U.K. that stood by its side was very weak in its own defense. And even being on their side, they didn't vote against it. I mean, the U.K., they simply abstained which means that they are neither here nor there. Now, when all of this happens, uh, Precious, what it brings to the fore is the inequality among nations that exist within the Security Council. It also sharpens the argument against this uh, obnoxious uh, veto power 
that uh, you know a few countries uh, hold and the need to actually find something that is uh, a bit more equitable and a bit more just. Mm. And it's interesting that you mentioned earlier that the U.S. is standing on its own because right after that, we saw the heavy criticism also coming from a series of Israeli and U.S. allies. For example, um, France's representative expressed regret that the resolution was not adopted, um, given what they said is a disastrous situation on the ground. Um, the U.S. is going to put forward a temporary ceasefire resolution. How do you expect members of the U.N. Security Council to react to that resolution? Well, I think uh, this is one of those times where uh, logic and common sense, uh, you know, needs to take the upper hand. It is difficult to uh, know exactly how they are going to vote, and one can only expect that they vote with their head and not their heart by actually supporting it. Because any form of uh, ceasefire, even though, even if it is uh, just like the few that have the, you know, uh, taking place in the past where they say it's for two days, three days, five days, a week, or, or so on and so forth, that is something much better than this consistent uh, bombardment that we continue to see. Mm. Now, the, U the U.S. is basically going to tweak one or two things uh, here and there to make it look as if uh, they have not, um, you know, they are not supporting a ceasefire, but, you know, a temporary ceasefire, according to them, to allow... Uh, you know, more negotiations and sustainable um, solution is better than, uh, you know, the veto power that they have just uh, wielded in this uh, UN resolution. Well, there, there is also a twist to what we are seeing play out because it is the first time um, that the U.S. president will be using the word ceasefire. He has failed to use that word, you know, a couple of times. What does that tell you about the state of relations between Israel and its allies? First, I will tell you what it tells us about the United States. It tells us that uh, the United States now realize that their position is untenable. Their position, especially under the Democrats, is completely and roundly against what they believe in. But the point remains that um, Israel is a natural ally of the United States, and it is basically inconceivable for the United States to break ties with, um, you know, uh, Israel. The closest we saw, uh, you know, to uh, what could be considered as uh, a critical conflict between the United States and Israel was during Obama's uh, regime. And now that um, uh, Joe Biden has allowed the use of ceasefire, it tells us that, um, you know, relationships between uh, Netanyahu of Israel and Biden of the United States is actually uh, hitting a very, very bad and uh, dangerous spot, particularly for uh, Israel. So, in the coming days, in the coming weeks, it may well be that the United States will be drawing closer and closer to what should be considered as normalcy in terms of uh, speaking out and standing resolutely for uh, a ceasefire. I wonder if, if Joe Biden can risk, risk that, especially when you look at the fact that elections are, are just around the corner and the continued support of you know, Americans for Israel. But I also wanted to get your overall thoughts um, on the hearings at the ICJ and the implication and ramification overall um, for the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. Well, um, it is difficult to predict uh, what is going to happen, but of course... Um, for some of us uh, who have watched uh, the proceedings and, um, you know, hear the sort of, uh, you know, questions and, you know, the angle to which uh, the arguments are being driven, um, there is cause for hope, for hope that uh, finally uh, there is going to be uh, a pronouncement uh, that actually uh, puts um, Israel on edge. Now, uh, the fact that uh, that is very, very likely to happen does not necessarily mean that uh, Israel is going to respect it because it would not be the first time that, um, you know, uh, Israel will be ignoring uh, rulings of uh, international uh, courts or other, you know, uh, human rights, um, you know, organizations uh, that uh, tells them that what they are doing in, uh, you know, Gaza, in, in Palestine, as a matter of fact, uh, completely, 
is, um, you know, uh, very, very uh, bad. So, yes, uh, it looks likely that the ruling will go uh, against uh, Israel's occupation and their continue, uh, continued bombardment. But uh, the extent to which that will uh, impact on the situation as we have it today uh, remains uh, wait and see. Mm. Interesting. Um, just a lot to follow through on um, in this ongoing war. Thank you so much for talking to us as always. And I know you're watching and following this development. Global, Global Affairs Analyst Colin Sumwiki. Thank you for having me, Precious. And still on the war between Israel and Hamas, the president of Colombia and Bolivia say um, they are in support.